In this video, we'll be looking at ionic bonds, in particular, how to draw dot and cross diagrams. Now, here's a few things to remember. These will be bonds between metals and nonmetals, where the nonmetal will always gain electrons to complete their outer shell, therefore forming negative ions. On the other hand, metals will always lose all their outer electrons and therefore becoming positive ions. And here's a few useful tips. Whenever we're drawing these ions, we need to make sure we draw every electron shell and then we represent them as ions by putting square brackets around them. And if we're gaining electrons, we form negative ions. And if we're losing electrons, we always form positive ions. Let's take a look at an example. Here's sodium chloride. Now, again, as usual, we're going to split this into things we're going to think about and things we'll do. Now, the first question we ask ourselves is what elements are present? Well, we have sodium and chlorine. Next, what group are they in? Well, sodium's group one and chlorine is group seven. Are they metals or non-metals? And again, sodium is a metal, chlorine is a non-metal. Will they gain or lose electrons? Sodium, the metal, will always lose, and chlorine, because it's a non-metal, will always gain. How many? Well, because sodium is in group one, it's going to lose one electron, and chlorine in group seven, which has seven outer electrons, will gain one electron to complete its shell. Let's start with this sodium then. It originally started with 11 electrons and it's lost one, which means it has 10 electrons left. We'll put two on the first shell and eight on the next. And again, we're gonna use square brackets to show it's now become an ion. And because it's lost one negative electron, it's now got a positive one charge. Chlorine, on the other hand, started with 17 electrons and it's gained one which means it now has 18 electrons in total, two on the first shell, eight on the next, and then the seven that it originally had. We're gonna use a dot this time to represent the additional electron it's gained. And again, square brackets, and in this case, it will be a minus one charge because it's gained one negative electron. Let's have a look at another example. Here's magnesium chloride, and we'll follow the same process as previous. The first question, what elements? Well, we've got magnesium and chlorine. Groups, magnesium's group two, whereas chlorine's group seven. Metal or non-metal, magnesium's a metal, whereas chlorine's a non-metal. And then are they gonna gain or lose? Well, metals always lose and non-metals always gain. How many? Well, magnesium losing electrons will always lose two because it's group two. And chlorine, which has seven, can only gain one more. Let's start with magnesium. Now, after losing two electrons, it now has 10. So out of those 10 electrons, two go on the first shell and the remaining eight go on the next. Square brackets to indicate it's now an ion. And if we've lost two negative electrons, it's now a positive two charge. Chlorine, it'll be the same as that last example. We're gonna have 18 electrons after gaining one, two on the first shell, eight on the next, and seven that it originally had, plus the one additional, and then we're gonna use our square brackets. Again, we're putting a minus one charge here. Now, we're not quite done. If we look back at that formula, we had MgCl2. So we had two of those chloride ions. Now we can either draw the same one twice or, which I think is a lot easier, you can just put a big two in front of those chlorides to represent that you have two of them. Both of these would be accepted on a GCSE test. Right. Here's a few examples for you to attempt yourself. I'll give you six minutes and I'll check back with you then. If you finish early, just skip ahead. Otherwise, take your time. Also, refer to the example in the top right-hand corner 
if you do need additional help.
let's see how we've done. Here's the answers to those questions. And as I said previously, we can always write the big numbers in front instead of drawing the same iron multiple times. Right, so let's summarize. Our non-metals are always going to gain electrons to complete their shell, therefore becoming negative, whereas metals will always lose all their outer electrons, therefore becoming positive. Now we can always just treat these as separate ions, as we did in our previous video. And I'd recommend having a look at that if we're struggling on how to draw them. And we don't need to draw the same ion multiple times. We can always represent those with a number in front. Right, I hope this video has helped. If you have any questions, leave them down below and I'll do my best to get back to you.